Broadcasting live from the city of Cincinnati, welcome back to Nathan Ivy Online. One man, one microphone, one hour. I'm broadcasting live every day, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. And my pleasure to be with you this morning again, and there's many things to talk about. At the top of my list, we got to talk about Denise Vanity Matthews. She was a lead singer, the front woman as it would be. For a group that some of you cats might remember from like the late 80s, 90s. Remember Prince um, had a relationship with her and had composed the music and put this group out. I remember because Vanity Six, Vanity Denise Matthews was one of the first original founding members of my own personal fantasy file. Yes. She was there from the very beginning, way back when I was a young, not even a teenager at that point. And so when I heard she had passed at 57, I thought, wow, we've got to discuss it. And not just that, not just that. But when I started thinking about the passing of Vanity uh, front member, Vanity Six, Denise Vanity Matthews is what they called her. I started thinking about one of my favorite black action movies from all time, from all time. They don't make action movies, not black action movies the way they used to. In fact, you don't really see them at all. You know, Will Smith may get a movie here and there. But it's not like it used to be back in the 90s, uh, back in the 80s when you had cast like Carl Weathers. You might remember that. Remember the movie Action Jackson? If you've never seen that movie and you are a black male, then you need to check that out, homie. That movie goes down in all time. It's one of the greatest movies ever, ever. I don't know why Carl Weathers didn't win an Oscar for that. I don't know why the, the screenplay writer or the director didn't win an Oscar for that. That was one of the greatest movies of all time. Greatest action movies of all times. For so many different reasons. Number one, you had a real black man in the movie. 
a real black man. He was dark skinned. He was muscular. If you go back and look at the movie, he wasn't afraid of his blackness. In fact, his race was brought up many times in and out of the movies. He was unapologetically black. Carl Weathers, Action Jackson. It was amazing as a young dude to see a movie like that. Uh, number two reason why Action Jackson is one of the greatest movies of all time. And again, you don't hear this too. You don't see this too much in modern day movies either. It's because in that movie, the black woman was actually the damsel in distress. Now think about it for a second. You see a lot of movies in black women and white women, but how many movies do you see? Have you seen in your lifetime where the hero, right? Spends the entire movie fighting his way through hordes of monsters, fighting his way through intergalactic space, bad guys fighting the government to get his woman. And she turns out to be black. It ain't a lot of them. <laughs> it's not a lot of them. Yeah. You might see a movie here or there with a black sister, but as the damsel in distress, you know, 90 minutes, uh, 120 minutes dedicated to saving a black woman. You don't see that. You don't see it. However, Action Jackson, that's right. That's right. What's up, Monica? Good morning. I'm glad you did. She said, I almost uh, missed you. I'm glad you did not. That movie is tight. Now, for my female listeners, you may not appreciate this, but maybe you will. But I got to speak directly to the fellas. Reason number three why Action Jackson is one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm going to give you two names, uh, fellas. Denise Vanity Matthews and Sharon Stone. Yeah, it's adult time. There's a couple scenes in the movie that uh, are strictly for adults. And yes, you do get the money shot with both of them. I'm being honest with you. I'm a, gra I'm a man. I'm always a man all the time. And it had to be said. Hopefully you can appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharon Stone, a young Sharon Stone. Hey, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got an interracial section of my fantasy file. And she used to be in it. You got a young, sexy Sharon Stone looking yummy. And you got a young, sexy Denise Vanity Matthews. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, as a black male in America, does it get any better than that? I don't think it does. Uh, I believe that the entire movie is on YouTube. And you can watch it as your leisure. And I don't know if you still have, like, um, a VHS uh, library. A lot of dudes had VHS libraries for years. There was a time in my life when I was much younger before I had kids. I had a huge library of VHS movies. Then it dawned on me. The hell with these movies, man. Huh? Replace it with books and CDs, and now everything's digital. But listen, if you have not seen that movie or if you haven't seen that movie in a long time, go check it out. It's much worth it. Um, we need more movies like that. We need more movies with, with black male leads who are unapologetically black. I'm just being honest with you. And the, 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 the love interest is a black woman. Wow, how novel. Really? You can do that? How novel. You can actually have a black male lead and then opposite the black male lead, you got a black female lead. Oh, my God. We're going to crack the atom. Yeah, it used to be like that. Nowadays with Shonda Rhimes, and I'm not hating on it. It's everybody's choice. I ain't got no problem with it. I'm just saying we need a little bit of everything. And I remember the way it used to be. That was hot. Uh, see, Vanity Six, uh, remember this? Oh. Yeah, it's from the movie uh, Action Jackson. I posted a clip on my Facebook page, The Nathan Ivy Show. Check it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Enough of that. You know what I'm talking about. Have you seen that movie? Do you agree with me? One of the greatest movies of all time, Action Jackson. And what about female groups? Did you know that Denise Vanity Matthews, she actually left the business and went I won't say she went gospel uh, like my former employer. She didn't do that. She just found God and said she didn't want to take her clothes off anymore and try to make money for it. I get it. That's her right. But that was back then. See, nowadays you got stars that want to have it all. You got stars that want to be the preacher's wife, but then they also want to be sexy on the red carpet. And they'll argue with you. Like, no, this is my right. Things are different now. Welcome to the new America. This was hot back in the day. Remember this? <laughs> And remember the point in there where he was like, always bet on black. Remember that? That was hot. Again, if you've never seen it, go download it, check it out. I think it's on YouTube, and you can watch the entire thing for yourself. 
If you want to talk about it and you want to discuss it, most definitely hit me up in the chat room uh, via my Facebook page as well. I'll be reading your comments on Twitter as the show continues. If you want to can t- talk about, uh, well, the passing of a member of Vanity Six, I was hot. They don't make groups like that anymore. They were unapologetically sexually overt. Unapologetically. This is what they were doing. Nowadays, they kind of nuance and they want to be sexy, leave something to be desired. Yeah, yeah, I get all that. But men are visual. And, you know, the folks at Vanity Six, uh, Prince was behind him. I mean, he was dating her. He wrote and produced the entire song, uh, Can You Touch Me? And then he gave the credits to Denise Matthews. And, you know, one can only speculate why. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at you, Prince. Prince has unusually good taste. How's this little man getting all these beautiful women? I don't get it. It must be the talent. It must be. Uh, also, this morning, we must discuss other things. I'm not going to bore you to death with the politics, but I do want to dibble and dabble and hit a couple things. And, I mean, the, the Republican nomination process is fun to watch because of Donald Trump. And it's fun because Donald Trump is saying things that Republicans are not allowed to say. Like, if you're a normal Republican card-carrying member of the Republican Party, you can't say the things that Donald Trump says because it's like they all took a blood oath or something. I don't get it. But let me play a quick clip for you. This is Donald Trump in South Carolina, and he was talking about Jeb Bush. And I think the man is making a lot of sense. But because of other, the other nonsensical things that he said, is he's kind of getting shouted down. It's like this noise. And I don't think people are really keen in on what he said. And I don't agree with everything that Donald Trump has espoused, his belief systems, or even his ideas. But on this particular issue, this man, Donald Trump, is absolutely right. Check this out. When somebody attacks me like Jeb uh, at one of the debates, and I was very nice to him at the Ronald Reagan. I didn't say it. I didn't want to say it. But he talked about the tremendous safety. Well, excuse me, the World Trade Center came down during the, you know, reign of George Bush, right? I mean, it came down. So during the Ronald Reagan, uh, if you remember the library debate, he mentioned about how we were safe. We weren't safe. That was the greatest attack in the history of the United States, worse than Pearl Harbor because it was individuals. We were attacked as individuals as opposed to the military. The greatest single attack. So what he's saying, and I'm standing up there, I'm saying, do I want to embarrass him by saying this? But because I'm a nice person, I didn't do it. But then when he used it another time, I had to say, I'm sorry, but we weren't safe. The World Trade Center came down, which was the greatest attack in history on this country. Absolutely. Uh, So you had that. Uh, You obviously had the war, which was a big mistake. I mean, I think few people would say the war in Iraq was a positive. You had him on the aircraft carrier saying all sorts of wonderful things. The war was essentially over. Guess what? Not over. (laughs) Not over. And, you know, the war (laughs) with Iraq is a disaster. Now Iran is taking over Iraq. As sure as you're sitting there, they're taking the oil. They're taking everything. I said take the oil. I was against the war in Iraq, by the way. I was the only one on the stage. Believe me, you should get some points for vision. But I was totally against the war in Iraq. I said it's going to destabilize the Middle East. And then when they went in, I said when they're getting out, take the oil. They didn't take the oil. So now Iran is going to have the oil and ISIS has the oil. And ISIS, this has fueled ISIS because ISIS now has so much money because they've had the oil. The man's making incredibly good sense. Donald Trump is absolutely right. I don't care what you think about his policies and what he said about building a wall. I don't care what you think about his policies and what he said about, you know, black folks or what he might do if he's the president. On this issue, this man is telling you the truth. And it's the truth that the elites, right, that those connected with the Bush administration and their acolytes and the mainstream media have been trying to suppress with inside the American consciousness ever since it happened. And this man is on stage at Republican primaries saying this. I mean, other than Donald Trump, man, that'll set you ablaze if you say something like that about the Bush family. And he's absolutely right. Meanwhile, uh, you know, former President Bush got on stage with his brother Jeb. And he's stumping for Jeb now in South Carolina. Some of the folks are saying it's too late. Some are saying it's it's just on time. I watched uh, some of the interview. At one point, he says he's doing oil painting now. How nice. However, there's nearly about um, 500,000, many of them were Iraqi civilians who will never paint another thing in their life, largely due to the decisions that were made under Bush's administration. It is what it is. And another thing that I love about Trump is not only is he calling out the fallacy of the war, 
Do you realize the Iraq war cost us a trillion dollars? Do you realize that part of the national debt